And we're back with some more oxygen not included. And today we're going straight to the oil planet. Well, this one over here, Blum Oil. This one is where we're going to set up our sour gas boiler and we need to start doing the prep work and laying, well, a lot of groundwork. I'm thinking a nuclear reactor over here is what we're going to be doing. But of course, we need to bring supplies with us. And we have been collecting supplies for a long, long time. Over here we have 20 tons of steel, 20 tons of thermium, 20 tons of plastic, uh, three Atmos suits, 50 reed fibre, just so we can repair those Atmos suits, uh, a whole bunch of vacillator recharges, we're going to be boosting people. We've also got some gold on the ground, some ceramic, some diamond, and yeah, that's just one rocket. The second rocket, exact same thing. Steel, thermium, plastic, Atmos suits, reed fibre, diamond, and we've actually got some cobalt and ceramic there on the ground. We are fully loaded. Let's get these teams moving. That gets the rockets underway, and while they're doing that, let's have a quick look at a couple of things here. Because one of our dupes is... was it? It's Brendan, I believe? They have... Oh wait, sorry. Millington. There it is. They're nectophobic... whatever. They're afraid of the dark. They don't like sleeping in the dark. Well, we've got them a new bed. This bed is right in range of the light given off by that plasma lamp. It's one of those artifacts you find lying about the place. Turns out it's theirs now. They're just going to use that as a nightlight. It's completely unpowered, doesn't require, I don't know, it just sits on the ground. It doesn't even take up space technically, it just lies there. This will hopefully stop them from going insane. Now, we are landing over here at our old landing spot where we had some pneumatic doors set up to uh, control the flow of duplicates. However, we're not going to stay here. The reason being, we want to do most of our work over this side, so I think we're going to move a landing pad over here. So I think we'll just get this crew to start making the landing pads this side, and uh, then we'll have the second rocket land over there. This should cut down on our commute. I mean, you know, just move closer to the job. Uh, we'll also fly this rocket, or we'll move this rocket over this side as well, once this one is down. I just want to get some doors in this before anything weird happens. Uh, as in, they start sharing each other's uh, cabins. You know what, we'll put this to clearance vacancy only. Yeah, we keep having to reset this because we destroy the atmosphere checkpoints every time we go home. It's not perfect, but it works. Before we get started on the colonization, I'd like to plug in the existing solar grid. That'll help keep our batteries up and running so we don't have to keep running on the, the wheels quite so much. In fact, we may stick in a couple of extra solar panels on this end. Hmm, give me a minute here. This is going to be a sort of semi-permanent settlement for a while. We have enough power coming in from the solar panels to keep us charged so we don't need to be running on any wheels. At the same time, well, yeah, down here there is a neural vacillator, and we have been collecting an awful lot of neural vacillator recharges, and I'm thinking it's time Millington hopped on here and got another dose. Now, the reason we put on Millington the first time around was we were trying to get them a stress reduction because of their inability to sleep at night. It was adding to their stress. Come on. There you go. Perfect. Let's see what we got for you. You have robust, plus 20 health a cycle. That's that's not enough. We're going to recharge that, and you're going to take care of it. Come up. No, oh, God damn it. I think I'm just going to have to lock the door. There we go. All you had to do was lock them in there. And cool, it's grown another brain. Wait. Get them in. So, come on, just give them the stress reduction one. That's the only one I wanted was the sunny disposition. Is that really too much to ask for? And for the third one, we get sunny disposition. Excellent. However, there is uh, something going on here that you may not be aware of. We have a lot of vacillator recharges. Like, an awful, awful lot. In fact, we have brought enough vacillator recharges to hit up everyone with four of them. We can get them every single one of the bonuses. Uh, I can't even remember what the last one is. Uh, what is it? Deeper Diver's Lung, that's it. So, we've now reduced their air consumption and all that. You know what, let's see if what happens. Can they, they actually be selected to go on a fifth time? I've never actually even tried that with a duplicate before. Uh, I'm willing to give it a shot. Okay. Uh, oh, never mind. We just wasted one. No, no, actually it goes back. Okay, fair enough. All right, just excuse me while I put all the other five duplicates through this trauma. And that is the last one. Every single member of our away team now has the traits regenerative, plus 20% health to cycle, even if they're in a sick bed or not, deeper diver's lung, minus 50 grams a second air consumption, or oxygen consumption, beef steak, 
plus 10 to strength, which works at about plus 400 kilos carried capacity, and sunny disposition, minus 20% stress a cycle. Meaning, stressing these guys out is going to be really hard. And this away team of ours is just going to be our construction team. They have been carefully handpicked for their high morale and, well... Okay, there was one, of course, negative one, or minor annoyance one, that was the the ones who were afraid of the dark. But this plasma lamp solves that problem, meaning we have a... Oh, whoops. Yeah, there was a little bit of a problem with some radiation vomiting earlier on. We'll, we'll sort that out. See, people aren't even stressed about it. They're like, yeah, we've been, we've been running through pee, and we're not even stressed, because we've got a sunny disposition now. All right, uh, we need to... Oh, well, maybe I landed the rockets too close to the edge. I want to put a nuclear reactor over here so that we can use the rads to power our cannons that we're going to use to fire all of our solidified methane to other planets. Uh, so, yeah, sour gas boiler goes in here, nuclear reactor goes over here. We might have to integrate the volcano. Yeah, you know what? If I didn't integrate the volcano, I'll just feel bad about it anyway. So let's see, how are we going to fit this in? I think the smart plan is figure out what we're doing with the volcano first, and then once we know what we're doing with the volcano, we can build the reactor around it. I'm thinking we're going to do something very similar to what we did back here in our steam room. Just build something like this around the volcano to extract a igneous rock, and then build all the steam turbines and the volcano and the and the reactor around it. I'm thinking all of the uh, igneous rock pieces should drop into something like this, and that should take care of it. Oh, I let people back in here to repair and clean the place up, and then lock the mic out again. Turns out I w the, the rads were not really as bad as I thought they were going to be. I really thought staying in there for more than a few minutes would radiate people very, very badly. Turns out you can keep them in there for like about oh, a quarter of a cycle without any serious side effects. I mean, well, it depends on what you consider serious, I suppose. Right, over here, we're setting up a payload opener so that we can fire over some stuff. Namely, some things we're going to use for liquid lock, like naphtha, uh, petroleum, stuff like that. Actually, we do have crude oil around here we could use. But I would like this open as well as that. We've got three interplanetary payloads that have been fired over. Uh, these are water. Yeah, there's 600 kilos of water lying around the place. That was an accident. Over at Tampona here, the, the water planet, I uh, set up some automation to turn these off, except I put the automation through the bottom of them, which I thought shut them off. It turns out it had to be through the top. And by the time I noticed, we'd already fired a few payloads over. It was all right. We still had people on the planet and we fixed it. But we'll, uh, we'll take that water and we'll put it in storage for now. Uh, let me see here. I think something like this should make the current basis of it. The uh, igneous rock will get shunted out here. We'll have four steam turbines along there. We can probably mount five on top. Maybe another five on top of that as well. Oh, that's too many steam turbines, but it's any way to keep it kind of, you know, synchronous. Hmm. Let me see. Yeah, we'll rip out the bottom here and we'll put in the aqua tuner down there. Plus, we're going to be running, what, 14 steam turbines? One aqua tuner won't be able to keep up with that, even with super coolant, but it should be enough for what we're going to be doing. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Let me, let me put in a little bit more infrastructure and it'll start to take shape. I think that's where our reactor is going to go. Wait, no, actually, it needs to be one more tile to the right. I was kind of hoping the reactor wouldn't end up in quite so much empty space up here. It's just we're going to have to put in backing plates for all of that. And backing plates take time and an awful lot of resources to build. That's one thing we tried to avoid on our home planet as well, namely because we were so short on resources back there. But here, I suppose, we do have lots of raw materials lying around, so it's not the worst thing in the world, so we can get away with it. But it would have been nice to avoid having to build all of the... Oh, we're going to need a lot of backing plates, aren't we? You know what? We'll find out how many it is after we've excavated this whole place out. This is sort of the, the basis of what it's going to look like. We're going to have five steam turbines on both of these levels, and then this one is going to be four. These four should easily be able to eat all the heat of that volcano, but they'll all just sort of be mixed in together. This is just to make sure that this never overheats. That would be bad, of course. You know, nuclear reactors and overheating, never a good thing. Then we're going to want to put in our aqua tuner down here, and when it comes to the aqua tuner, we want to well, what? Use thermium? I mean, we've got steel, or we could use thermium. Does it re really make a difference? We have so much of this resources we've brought with us. Uh, actually, I'm going to go with thermium, just because it has that better overheat potential. Um, hmm. Actually, let me put in the piping. I do want to put down the steam turbines just yet, because we have to vacuum out this whole area, and I want to leave the space available for the gas pumps. So I think piping goes in first, and then we can put in the, the steam turbines after. For our cooling solution here, we are going to run super coolant all the way through the steam turbine area to cool them down. I think we're going to keep them all in a vacuum with just a layer of liquid along the bottom. That should work out just fine. We've even got a whole bunch of crude oil stockpiled somewhere. Ah, yes, over here. Five tons of this stuff. We can deconstruct that and we'll drop out a bottle of five tons of crude oil for us to use for liquid locks and things like that. 
And we're also going to need a bunch of super coolants now that I think about it. So we're going to start firing that stuff over pretty soon. Uh, say 10 tons of super coolant should do us for now, and we'll have this thing unloaded. We've already fired over some naphtha, so we can make some of those little bead li liquid locks we've got. Yeah, 200 kilos of naphtha here. But for now, let's just finish off the basics. Mm, this is... Oh, it's awkward. I'm, I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to examine the volcano without it because because if it goes off the moment we start this up it's, it's bad we sort of have to start the nuclear reactor first make sure this whole room is full of steam then open up the volcano but we can't open up the volcano unless it's in a vacuum it, we'll figure it out we'll figure it out just got to put in the basics after we get all of this in i'm thinking why don't we just remove those backing plates the drywall and let the the vacuum of space take care of some of this uh, gases problem i probably should have thought of that sooner but uh, we're all sitting to get rid of the nuclear waste Nuclear waste we're going to pipe up here and probably infinite storage, though we may just fire that to Dampona to increase its radioactivity. What's it up to right about now? We're up to 6,000 rads each one of those tiles. That's actually pretty good. It's nearly at full capacity already. We don't even need much more radioactivity here. Hmm. Well, we'll, we'll store it here and find a use for it, I suppose. Uh, worst case scenario, we can then pipe it out of there. I mean, we can siphon off the excess somehow. All right, let's uh, let's get this sealed up, and then we can start getting rid of the gases seriously. We are going to need to prep this with a lot of water, uh, considering how many... Well, normally you'd put in about five tons or so down here, but I'm thinking we're going to go a little bit more. We've also got this giant pool of water to draw on, which makes things a lot handier. I think we can throw in a liquid pump here and sort ourselves out. Let's just ignore the fact that Brendan somehow managed to fall in there. It's fine. We, we managed to get them out before they starved or anything. Uh, we'll throw ourselves in a couple of pitcher pumps there. And that should get us all the water we need. Then we just got to set up some bottle emptiers to dump it over here. Um, actually, we can probably put them along here. Wouldn't make too much of a difference. Well, that looks terribly old school. Considering we're putting down a nuclear reactor and we're just using bottle emptiers to dump water into it. It seems perfectly appropriate for oxygen not included. All right, uh, for draining all the gases out, all we're doing is uh, I've cut out a little slit here, but we're also going to have to put in a few gas pumps just to get some of the harder to reach places at the end. Though this one on the top is actually doing quite nicely. All right, uh, the reason for that is we're going to connect the power grid through here. Oh, actually, I really should have put a power connector over there when I seal that up. So we're probably going to let in a little bit of gases, but it's fine. We'll just do that like that to speed along the gas extraction, which honestly, if you try and use vacuum to suck out gas, it just, it does not work. You need gas pumps. There's no other way around it. We're going to throw in a few gas pumps here just at the very edge with some high pressure gas vents, all powered by some coal generators because well, coal is simple and easy to use. Should probably throw down a local storage bin for that just to make things simpler. This should only be a brief thing. In fact, we might use that for a bit of a kickstart as well. Then they'll start up, and we'll probably have to expand this a bit. Hmm, let me see. Where could we squeeze a few more? Actually, no. First up, back home there has been some stuff going on. Okay, like, uh, well, all of this was going on, I did send out a rocket on a very long round trip. It went here, here, over here, 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 and then returned home again. And this resulted in bringing back all of these wonderful artifacts. So we've got, what, six artifacts? Mostly coffee cups. Ah, just so many coffee cups. But every single one of these has to be taken down to, where is it, this thing, the Artifact Analysis Station. At which point it gets uh, all of its nasty stuff, the neutronium removed from it, and there's a chance for it to generate a neural vacillator recharge, which we can use to bump up our people. Well, not our current away team. Our current away team is just totally rolling at the moment. They don't have to worry. Oh, and one thing. How is this looking? God damn it, would you actually bring along enough to fill it? 9.5 kilos. No, you still haven't filled it. There's there's eight kilos left to go. You're just, uh, you're making more work for more people. That is an unholy mess of gases. We've got chlorine, oxygen, natural gas, polluted oxygen, and yeah. Yeah, there was even a little bit of hydrogen there at the top, but we managed to get rid of that as well. This is going to take another few minutes, but soon, soon we can start firing this up. I'm going to have to start seeing about putting some super coolant into the cooling loop and maybe actually check my numbers on how much water we've got in here. We don't want to overpressurize the nuclear reactor, otherwise it'll pop straight away and yeah, that would that would slow things down quite substantially. While we wait another few cycles for that to take care of itself, there is one other thing we can do. Liquid bridge. Right there, and that should allow the super coolant to start filling up the loop. That, yeah, that's for cooling down all of the steam turbines. Once that's done, what's all that's left? Ooh, we're gonna to have to do uranium and a bunch of stuff up here, so... 
Yeah, let's see where we're going to be putting in the reactor bits. Oh, and we're going to want to cover the whole thing in plastic as well. Otherwise, servicing it could become a little bit difficult. So I'm thinking a quick layer or three of plastic up here should help, uh, help prevent this place from turning into an unserviceable environment. One of the reasons we've put this so tight against the top of the map is we want access to the juicy, juicy rad bolts it's going to provide. Now, if you look at this section over here, you notice we've got about 8,000, 9,000, pretty much right touching up against it, we can get to 8 to 9,000 rads for each one of those. That's pretty good. So we're going to take as many of them as we possibly can. Fortunately, getting them out of there is going to be a bit tricky. We're going to use some diagonal rad bolt shooting. Unfortunately, they've got this, what, rad bolt joint plate you can use, which I thought would be great, but it's made entirely out of plastic, which means it melts. It melts at something like 160 or something degrees, and this place is going to be well over 200. So, nah, we're just going to use the rad bolts to a, a little diagonal. Same thing as we did before with these, uh, these storage of nuclear waste. All right, now, with that done, though, we've got a layer of plastic up there. That's going to be our conveyor receptacle where the enriched uranium is dropped in. Uh, we might want to make some localized enriched uranium production here, but we'll, we'll throw down like 5-10 tons to get them started. Now, I know we haven't actually stuck in the reactor yet. I occasionally plop it in so I can see exactly where we're going to be building and what we're going to be plugging into so I know where the, the piping goes, but then I, I usually get rid of it immediately, just in case it ends up with uranium and water inside at the same time and, and just starts up out of nowhere. That could happen and I'd prefer to avoid it. Well, not really, I don't think there's any even enriched uranium on this planet. All our enriched uranium is back home. So we should be safe to not worry. Yep, we don't have to worry about that until we actually ship some over. We're shipping this stuff over. I have at the very top of the map. One second. Yeah, over here. We've got ourselves the interplanetary launchers. This one here is hooked up for whatever we need. So if we want to load in, say, enriched uranium, steel, thermium, ceramic, whatever, it can all get dumped in here and sent over to that cannon. Any liquids we need, like naphtha, super cool and stuff like that, we just set up this bottle emptier to take care of it. Reminds we should turn that off. And then it all gets pumped over and sent over to our side and woo. I might get someone to repair that soon enough. Not just yet though. I try not to get them to repair that because I have to deflect all the rad bolts, otherwise people get a little bit injured. Have a look at on Dampona. Oof. Yeah, no, that's that's fine. It's grand. Yeah, everything is going according to plan-ish. Oh, yes, current plan. Uh, yes, the current plan is to bring water. We're bringing it all the way from over here. This is our new source of, source of water. I'd completely forgotten about this when we were coming over, so I figure instead of shipping over the water, let's just use locally sourced stuff. Plus, it's already preheated a bit, which will make it a little bit faster to boil. Now, I've been doing the uh, the math on how much pressure we're going to end up with in here. It's probably about 21 to 22 kilos of steam pressure, which is not going to be enough, considering how much we've got on the bottom there. But what I do want to do is put in another option. So the other option is this liquid pipe here. So if we don't have enough steam pressure in there and we need to add in more steam pressure so it hits the, ed the edge turbines, then we just keep dumping in more steam and we keep dumping in more and more water until eventually we hit the pressure we desire. We want about 60 kilos for every tile. 150 would overpressurize it, but 60 kilos should be more than enough to handle that volcano when it erupts. We are almost ready to go. Uh, Power-wise, I am going to hook up the whole spine into the coal grid and then I'm going to turn the whole coal grid, well, I'm going to expand the coal grid a grid grid a bit as well so that we can run everything and then we'll power that up then once that's all powered up we can throw in the nuclear reactor oh we're gonna need to ship in some resources from back home as is we're actually running out of medicine over here we don't have enough rad pills so what we've done here is we've set this to collect rad pills boom that's 100 rad pills all we do is we set up something nearby that we need say steel whatever we dump it into the local container and then once it's done there's yep there's 100 rad pills out in the line they all get sent over. So next up, we're probably going to want some enriched uranium. So let's say enriched uranium, give us ooh, five tons. Then we'll have the five tons of uranium brought here. Once it's all stored up nice and safely, then we'll actually do the, the loading into the conveyor loader. Actually, did we send enough to launch that? I think it has to wait until it's got 200 kilos. Oh, come on. Okay, fine. 199 kilos and you can launch. How's that? No? I think you have to disable it and re-enable it if you do it that way. Well, I don't have it hooked up to automation, so you know what? We just set you to 200 and eventually we'll throw something else in there. Everyone can get their rad pills from, you know, the, the 100 we sent over already. Back on Bloom Oil, our supplies have arrived. Excellent. Everyone was starting to run out of rad pills. That was going to become rather embarrassing. 
It's okay. It's okay. Now we've also got a bunch of enriched uranium. We sent over ra radiation pills and enriched uranium because, you know, packaging is important. And you want to wrap those those radiation pills in active radiation just to make them, you know, more potent. Oh, almost forgot to seal that off. And by almost, I mean I completely forgot that. But we got it now. Uh, we'll also sweep that up. And I think, I think we're just about ready to go. We are golden. I've double checked, triple checked, quadruple checked everything. That should be fine. And... All right, the, the thermal aqua tuner is going to immediately kick in, but that's to be expected. Uh, we'll make you, if you go below 80, I want you to kick in just to make sure. Hey, anyone want to get around to filling those coal generators at all? No. Uh, yeah, that's the problem. Let's make that down to about 20 then. When the automation disables them, they don't come along to put coal in them. So you want to have the automation signal on long enough for someone to run around and put in some coal into them. Or maybe we should just, uh, maybe use a little bit of automation might be an idea. Cooling prep work all done. Automation for our coal grid all done. All we have left to do is put in the reactor. Steel? Yeah, I could make it out of thermium, but you know what? That's just too flashy. It's fine. A little bit of steel will do grand. Okay, water is going to come in from up here. We'll be recycling the water that's coming from these five steam turbines to fuel it when the time comes. But for now, that will be our source. All right, who's going to get to do the honors? And it's Zap. No, Zap has decided it's lunchtime, and they're just going to drop the steel off. Thanks, thanks, Zap. Like, Zap is one of our best dupes. I really have to go through these at some point. Piloting, 20. Machinery, 26. Athletics, 24. Science, 25. Excavation, 16. And construction, 12. Strength, strength 23. That's... That's an incredible dupe. There is uh, quite a few who are, who are fairly decent, but that's probably the most points, namely because they got science early on. All right, so, no, nope, Heavy Metal Pie is going to deliver it, but he's not actually going to build it. Someone else is going to come along to do it. And it's Brendan. Hey, Brendan. Good job, buddy. What's your construction skill like? Uh, construction of 12, excavation of 27. Okay, they're going to get a plus 11 from the suit. Machinery of 9, athletics of 24, uh, strength of 18. You know, all around a very, very solid pawn. All right, let's get it done. Or not. Someone can go take, take your break. Yep, we'll, we'll have someone else come along and take over from you. Heavy metal pie. Oh yeah, heavy metal, what's your... Uh, construction of six, that's kind of weak, to be honest. Excavation of 12, machinery of 26, athletics of 24, strength of 21. Mm, seriously, this is just taking forever. Come on, hurry it up. Never mind, heavy metal pie is gone for lunch. So that's three duplicates who've been involved. One to drop off the resources, one to start building, one to the middle, and... Paul, David, Gurgley. Which I, yeah, sorry, I can't pronounce that name still. Skills-wise, construction 11, excavation 10, machinery 29, athletics 24, strength 18. All of them got decent strength because they're getting plus 10 from beefsteak from the uh, the neural vacillator. Come on, come on, come on. And automation-wise, we are golden. Perfect, it's set to off. So red signal is being sent. Then all we have to do is set this to allow manual use. And we're going to go industrial ingredient. Damn it. Manufactured material, enriched uranium. Oh, and we might want to put in a little bit of automation to feed that later. I got rid of the manual use. I would prefer if they actually loaded this up, or if uh, it was only the auto sweeper that loaded this up. And why is the auto sweeper not loading up? Oh, yeah. Same priority. Priority six. Thank you very much. And done. All right. Then all we got to do is wait for that to get all the way across to here. Then once we've got a little bit of a stockpile, we can flip the switch. And. Uh, don't break, don't break, don't break. Come on. Oh, yeah, priority system again. We'll make you a four. Reactor is a five. Seriously? Ugh, I should have locked the doors before I let... Well, I hope you brought your sun factor. Because it's toasty! Minor radiation sickness. Really? How? You've only been here two seconds. Oh, well. Yep. Keep moving, 64, 66, jeez. Oh, you know, that is, um, yeah, you definitely need the, app. you definitely need the rad suits. Definitely need the rad suits. Oh, wow. Okay, let's make sure no one goes in there anymore. Anyone else tries to go in there to get walked back? Whoa. All right, we're sealed up. That means no one can get in there anymore. It's got all the uranium going in, that's going down, and we've got our first blobs of steam. Exit. And I totally forgot to put in a temperature shift plate, didn't I? Mm. We 
could risk it. Yeah, a couple of temperature shift plates shouldn't be that hard, so long as they stay far enough away. Uh, wait, no. That one there, one there, and perfect. It'll probably be fine. Yeah, they're grand. They're just below the radiation cloud. Uh, are they? Yeah. Absorbed rad dose is tiny. They're not even getting... Look, it, it's barely moving at all. A couple of temperature shift plates there will just help spread out the heat. This could take a while. Let's give it a few cycles and see. Radiation-wise, what are you looking like? 9,000, 9,000, 10,000, 10,000, and you're getting 9,000 as well. We're going to have plenty of rads to run our systems. While all that is going on, we're going to get Zap in here to analyze the minor volcano. Uh, we have created a little liquid blob gas seal here using NAPTA. Just nice and handy. Please don't be erupting right now. That would be really awkward if you were erupting just at this moment. Nope. Not yet. Okay, Zap, gonna need you down here like five seconds ago. Uh, Aaron's... no. Come on, Zap, you've got... yep. Ah, right, here he comes. Zap is the only one with the uh, required skills. Damn! Zap is like... this is still all in one sitting there doing that. That's really impressive though because if that starts erupting, it's going to get very toasty trying to uh, examine that. And we do have enough steam here that I think if this erupted now, it all the heat should get drained out quite handily. I think... I think we've got the start of our sour gas boiler. You know, I didn't plan that, but Zap actually got it done all in one shift. I was kind of expecting him to take two shifts. I suppose when your, your science level is 27, it kind of speeds things along a bit. You know, sort of like by 1080% faster. Uh, oh, and grab that while you're in there, people. When's the next eruption? Erupts in 3.1 cycles. Okay, we're, we're fairly safe. We can seal this sucker up. Done. Now all we got to do is balance out the steam pressure. I wasn't too sure on this one how it was going to work out, but it seems to be... Okay, we can add in a little bit more if we need to, but I think I'll wait until the, the temperature goes up a bit. But for now, let's see how many rads we're getting. Uh, let's just turn on one of them, because I don't think we're going to need a lot of these, at least to start. Say you. We will turn you on and fire you. And what's your charging rate? 955 rads per cycle. That's excellent. All right, well, these, this is charging. Let's have a quick look at the steam pressure, and you can see, well, it's 30 kilos over here. By the time it gets to the end, you're down to grams. So these final turbines aren't getting enough pressure. This one over here, these are here are fine because that's they're closer to this section. So we need to keep dumping in more steam until those top turbines become a little bit more active. Uh, easiest way to do that... Well, we did leave that piping right there. Done. Now, because we have access to the snip tool, we don't need to put in an automation and a little bit of an on-off thing or anything like that. We just dump that in, and that'll just dump water right in here. It's going to drive down the temperature a bit, but it will also drive up the steam pressure. And you, how you doing? Not quite there yet. Actually, let's just fire this one now. And let's make that 250. That hits there, deflects down there diagonally, hits that one, gets sent straight forward, fired up, and poof. And we're charging our engines. Do we need to... No, well, actually, sort of. I think I'm going to... If I launch this rocket, the uh, exhaust is going to potentially cause issues with those steam turbines. So I think I'm just going to move the rockets a little bit to the left before I leave. And <laughs> just, you know, deconstruct them and reconstruct them over there. It might just be better. Hmm. Uh, or actually, wait a minute. No, no. I'm going to worry about that later. For now, I just want to make sure this is all functional. I think we've got about enough water in there. I might want to let that spread out for a bit. So you know what? We'll cut off the flow. Actually, we'll cut it off way back. This stuff is, uh, that stuff is hot water. Very, very hot. Anyway, that should even at the steam pressure or get it good enough that it's not starving the, st the end steam turbines, but not so much pressure that it causes the reactor to explode. At the same time, I just realized we have no way of getting the uh, igneous rock out of here. I'm going to have to send people back in Put in an auto sweeper and then sweep out the igneous rock that drops out of this. The igneous rock should drop down right there. I suppose in the nuclear waste it shouldn't exchange heat quite well. Actually, you know what? Let's, let's just give it one more cycle and see what it does look like. While we're waiting for that to erupt, I should probably point out why we have those six yellow alerts going on. Uh, that's to do with the spacefarer modules. At some point, the dupes stopped coming out, and I was wondering why. And uh, it turns out they just never restocked the Atmo suit docks. I know this seems dumb, but hear me out. If we want them to restock the atmosphere docks, that's one of the, the loading commands or one of the sweeping things. And I don't want them to prioritize sweeping, I want them to prioritize building. We leave these at 
uh, emergency priority. That means if ever any of these need a new suit, they'll go grab one instantly. And then the moment it's in, they just sort of ignore it. So it kind of works, and uh, it's for both of them. As in, yeah, that's why we have six yellow alerts, in case you were curious. Considering that we custom built this nuclear reactor around this volcano, I'll be really annoyed if this doesn't work. And that should go over the edge, don't form any tiles. Perfect, there we go. Yes, seems to be working perfectly. Alright. I'm gonna call that a win. Oh, okay, that took a little bit more of a de design toll out of me than I thought it would. But with that finished, we can now put in, I think in about, say here, in this section, we can put in the sour gas boiler. We should be able to squeeze one in right there. Uh, it should only be about ooh, roughly that biggish, or oh, I don't know, roughly something about that size. But that, that is for the next episode. Sorry about the delay getting these ones out. It's just, uh, these things take a little bit more time and effort, <laughs> but it doesn't make a difference. Hope you enjoyed and uh, good luck.